What's up, no coders? I recently logged into my JotForm account, which if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I use JotForm a lot to collect data online. When I logged in, I saw that they built a new feature. I don't even know if we can call it a feature. It's almost like a new software or a new product. So let's discuss about my first impression of JotForm approvals. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I am all about helping you unlock the full potential of no code tools so that you can reclaim your time and stop doing all the admin stuff that you don't need to be doing. So if that's of interest to you and you want to get some personalized training for that, check below this video in the description. I do a weekly live webinar that walks through our exact steps for doing that. It's completely free for you to join us. Our clients can save five to 10 hours every week using these tools. So if you would like to reclaim some of your time, check that link out and join us for our next training. But without further ado, I've got to give you my first impressions about JotForm approvals. As I said, I've barely used this tool, I think maybe like two minutes worth in the software. So let's take a look at what they're doing. First and foremost, I wanna direct you to jotform.com slash product slash approvals slash features. Now, if you just go on to Jotform right now, you're gonna be directed to this page because they're pushing out their new product and they want you to see what's in there. So I just wanna walk through the copy here on the page really quickly. We've got JotForm approvals is gonna help us automate the approval process inside of our business. Looks like it starts with a form element, at least in this little image it does, and then we can just click drag certain conditions. So here comes the approver, they have to do this thing. That looks pretty cool. Uh, we've got advanced approval settings. So we could you know, send an approval or a denial, or it looks like in this case, we can even determine like a new outcome on the fly. That's kind of nice, so custom outcomes. We can allow comments, we can reassign tasks to other people, request more information. All right, uh, we can escalate tasks, so if somebody hasn't completed something, it can automatically uh, get assigned to somebody else, it sounds like. Set expiration dates so that the flow doesn't get held up. I mean, these are great features. And my initial thought as I'm reading this is, we can build approval processes with no code tools, but it seems like JotForm has found a way to make it out of the box. And it makes a ton of sense because JotForm forms are the starting point of data collection on the web, right? If you use JotForm, which you should. So it's pretty cool that they've thought ahead of what their clients need and built this tool so that we have the ability to, to you know, put together these approval processes. Anyhow, we are automatically ending the task, uh, finish the task if it hasn't been completed by a certain date. We have customized notification emails. This, I mean, this kind of sounds too good to be true. We can snooze tasks, dynamic approvals, set up advanced conditional logic. Okay. Parallel paths. Looks like we've got the ability to have multiple people needing to approve something before it moves forward. These are, I mean, it looks like they've thought of pretty much everything for an approval process flow. Let's jump in and actually try it and see what it looks like. So we can start from scratch. Pretty typical for JotForm. Normally I would do this if I was very comfortable with the tool, but given that this is my first time here, I think I wanna start with a template. Uh, let's take a look at what templates they offer. So we've got uh, leave request approval, budget approval, uh, new hire approval, <laughs> PPP loan approval, all right. Uh, certainly know some folks who've been going through that. Uh, document approval process, a purchase order approval. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they've thought about. And just looking at the flow chart that they've put together for these templates, it seems that these are more complicated templates, which I'm sure if we were to build them by hand would take a lot of effort, at least at first when we're still learning the tool. But it's kind of cool that we can just install a template and automatically get access to the, you know, the, the framework here. Since I'm just starting off with this tool, I don't wanna jump into a template and do anything too crazy yet. So I'm gonna just try to launch this with a one-step approval. So I'm just gonna click here and see where this takes me. So it looks like I need to connect a form. So it makes sense, of course, that a form is always the starting point. And then the approval will be sent to me. Uh, this is, of course, my JotForm account. So it automatically brought me in here. 
Uh, and then it looks like if I approve, this thing happens. If I deny, this thing happens. And then we're taken to the end of the approval process. Pretty straightforward. Let's see about adding a form here. So I can just click on this and here are all of the forms that I already have set up. Now I'm guessing that most of you don't have 50 forms sitting in JotForm. The only reason that I have this many, of course, is because I build a lot of examples and, and showcase a lot of these features. Now, since I don't wanna actually mess up any of the forms that I currently have, I went ahead and found one of my existing forms and I've cloned it so that I can map it to this particular approval process. So let's drop in to add form one more time and I now have this test for approvals form, which I can click in there. And if we wanna preview the form, we can just click here or what's this little button do? Looks like we can actually go into the form builder and make some changes. So, okay, this is just full transparency. The form that we use, this is live on my website right now. Of course, this is the cloned copy, but this is the form that is qualifying leads when they approve or when they sign up for a development project with Gap. And so we walk through these different questions and depending on how they're answered, of course, we either approve or deny that form. So this is kind of a real life use case that I've had to string together a bunch of other tools in order to get this to work. So let's see how easily it comes together using JotForm approvals. Back into approvals, I've now assigned my form. Coming back down here, I see I still have two alerts. So let me click on here and see what this error is. It looks like I need to map an email field to this because it stands to reason that we receive the form, then I get to either approve or deny it, and then uh, we're gonna need to send a response whether it's approved or denied. So let's take a look at this. How do, I add, how do I map that email address? Drop into email here, email subject, your request has been approved. Who's the recipient? Ah, here we go. So I can probably bring in the form field here and sure enough, this knew already that I had an email question on my form and so I can map it right here, bring it on in, save that and my alert's gone, great. Uh, let's bring one in here as well, just in case it gets denied. Uh, again, I guess I'll go into the settings here. Let's go back to recipients, uh, recipients email, I grabbed it in the form field and we'll save there. And I think that that should do it for us, right? Looks like we're good to go. So maybe we can publish this and take it out for a spin. Let's give it a shot. I'll open the form in new tab here and I'll just go ahead and fill out this form. All right, so I've filled out the form. It took me to the thank you page. And now let's take a look at what happens within the approval process. Again, if we go back to the process, somebody submits the form and then it should come to me and ask me for either approval or, or otherwise. So if I drop into my email, I will see that in fact, I did receive an email from JotForm that says test person, uh, test for approvals, approval. <laughs> it's a lot of tests and approvals in the subject line, but I used the name test person. And of course I used my personal email so that I could delineate between, you know, company business and the person submitting the form. So in my, from my approval, so from my approval process, I'm seeing the data that they put into the form and I can either approve or deny right here in my email. So let's take a look and see what happens. If I click on approve and I want to move this on to the next steps in my automated process, uh, it looks like I have to perform this action. So again, here is the data that they filled out when they submitted the form. I can add comments if I need to, and then I can either approve or deny. So the approval button in my email did not automatically approve it. Instead, it opened up that particular uh, form submission, and I now need to come in and decide if I'm gonna approve or not. So let's suppose, of course, I do approve this, then we should be good to go. Uh, what happens to me from the company perspective? I don't receive a new email. So even if I refresh this, it looks like that was not part of the process, which stands to reason. I know that I approved it. I don't need to be notified. However, if I flip into my personal email, in fact, I did receive the form that says your request has been approved. So this is really quite incredible. It took me all of a few minutes to put together this template that somebody can submit and they get a response. 
Now, of course, I could get more granular about how we address the outcome. Now, for my example, it was very straightforward, just approval or denial. And I didn't really send anything in the response email, but normally I think we would definitely want to customize that. So there's certainly a way that we could drop in and edit what the body of this email says. You know, so we can you know, determine how this is received and add additional information here. Furthermore, I can add additional options off of the approval process. Maybe it's not just approve or deny. Maybe there are four different outcomes. Well, in that case, I can just drag this out, select a new outcome and send out a different response or have a completely different process flow. So it's pretty incredible, in fact, that this is all under one roof inside a jot form. All of it starts with just a form submission and I've got a fully baked idea here ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this and let me know if you start using JotForm approvals and how much time it's able to save you. Definitely seems like a really cool tool and I'm excited to jump in myself. In the meantime, if you're looking to save more time with no code tools, do check out the webinar I mentioned earlier. The link will be below this video in the description and in the comments on YouTube. I look forward to seeing you there and I'll catch you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.